Hi there guys, it's me Cami, and today I'm going to bring you an updated tutorial on the conversion of an avatar into the VRM format. Uh, I did make a video a while ago, I think it was about a year ago on this, but that tutorial is kind of outdated now, so I just wanted to give you guys a much better version of that tutorial that isn't quite as long and uh, will help you guys uh, get up and running with the VRM format. I will say before I start that uh, this tutorial will require some moderate knowledge of Unity. Nothing too much, just how to navigate the scene, how to navigate the menus, some basic shortcuts, that kind of stuff. And if you don't know that or you've never used Unity before, I do encourage you to watch my first tutorial on it. Even though it's, it's outdated, it does kind of guide you step by step through how to uh, open Unity and navigate the menus and get around the scene, that kind of thing. But after you've watched that tutorial, you can come back here. But uh, yeah, that's just my, a little word of warning before we start. For this tutorial, you will need the updated package of UniVRM, a 2019.4 or greater version of Unity, and an avatar that you know works with VRChat or Chillout VR. The reason I say this is because it's likely if you can get the avatar to work with either VRChat or Chillout VR, you will not find any struggles converting it into the VRM format. Without further ado, let's begin the tutorial. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is open up Unity Hub. Unity Hub makes it easy to manage multiple versions of Unity that you might have on your system at the same time. Select the appropriate version of Unity. I am using 2019.4.13 F1 and name your project whatever you deem necessary and then click create. Unity may take a while to load up, so give it some time. Once Unity has loaded up, import both your model and UniVRM package. You will notice for my model, I am importing a Unity package which contains all the different variants of my model. Do not be alarmed. I will only be demonstrating the conversion with one of these models. You should still be able to follow along with the tutorial just fine. Once that's finished, we can begin. Select your model from the hierarchy on the left, find the VRM tab drop down menu and click export uni VRM. A menu will appear in Japanese and a bunch of errors, but you should be able to click the tab at the top and change the language to English. Scroll down and fill out the title, version and author boxes. Assuming your avatar is for personal use, it doesn't really matter what you fill them with. However, it's good practice to fill them sensibly. Once that's done, click export, name the file appropriately and save it to the assets folder of the current Unity project. Give it a moment while Unity loads up the VRM information for that model. Once that's done, you'll notice a series of new folders as well as a prefab for the model. Drag this prefab into the hierarchy and it will appear in the scene at the origin position. If that's not a good place for you, feel free to use the arrows that appear to move the model. You will also notice that the model appears to be really dark. Find the folder that was created with the material suffix and then press Ctrl and A to select all of the materials. On the inspector in the upper right, click the drop down menu for the shader, find VRM and select MTOOM. If you have any materials that you know are transparent, click them and change the rendering type to transparent. Next, click on your model in the hierarchy and in the inspector, find the blend shape field. Click it and the folder containing the asset will open and be highlighted. Once again, click it. The inspector will now show a series of different slots for various expressions. Leaving neutral alone, click on the rest of the buttons and open a drop down menu for the mesh that contains the correct blend shapes. If your model contains VR chat blend shapes for syllables, use the most appropriate one for each sound. However, for my model, I know these five blend shapes each correspond to AEIOU, so I'll not be using the VR chat blend shapes. For blink, select all the blend shapes that make your bottle blink. In this case, I do use the VRChat ones as it is easier and I know that they look right. I personally left the emotion slots empty since the blend shapes are in Japanese, but feel free to fill yours in if you have the time. The four look 
blend shapes are not required to be filled. However, if your model already has blend shapes for these, you might as well fill them in like I am doing. Blink L and Blink R are singular blinks for each eye. Some VRM applications will use these two instead of the other blink, so it's also best to fill these in. Next is applying spring bones, which are basically dynamic bones for VRM. You'll notice your model has another group attached to it called secondary. This is where you'll be adding all of your spring bone components. Now things start to get a bit tricky from here on out, so I'm going to be explaining it the best I can. You'll want to open and go down to your model's armature and find the bones that correspond to the things you want to move. For example, your hair, tail and ears. Then in the spring bone script, click the drop down for root bones and select how many bones you want the script to manipulate. I recommend that you use a single script for things that are going to be moving the same way. For example, as you can see, I am dragging both ear bones into the script since they'll move the same. Adjust the value of stiffness force and drag force and maybe the hit radius if need be. I have already figured out the values for all of my bones beforehand, but you will need to spend some time playing around in order to get the desired effect you want. This will be the most time consuming part of setting up your model. It took even me about an hour to get everything tweaked the way I wanted. Continue to add more spring bone components until you have got yourself everything set up correctly. Remember, this process will take the longest, so don't beat yourself up about it if you can't get it right straight away. Save your progress, take a break for a while, and come back to it once you've rested. If it helps, you can click the box for Draw Gizmo, which will allow you to see the bones and hit radius while in play mode. After you finish setting them up, enter play mode and test out how your spree bones look. If you're happy with how they look, we can move on to the next step, which are colliders. Select a bone in your hierarchy that you want to add a collider to and add component. Colliders interact with spring bones and can either push them or prevent them from entering. I am adding one on my chest bone to stop my hoodie strings from clipping through my body. Adjust the radius and offset until you get the desired size. You'll then need to go back to your spring bones and find the scripts containing the bones you want the collider to interact with. Click the drop down for collider groups and enter how many colliders you want to interact with the spring bones and drag the bone containing the collider in the slot. After that, we can move on to setting up eye tracking. Find the VRM look at head script and in the head slot, drag the bone for your head from your armature. For the target slot, you want to drag in the main camera from the hierarchy and then you want to move and rotate it so that it faces the front of your model. Then you want to click the drop down for all of these options and enter play mode. You should see some angles drawn from your head to the camera and will change depending on how you manipulate the position of the camera. Pay attention to your eyes. If they aren't moving enough, try adjusting the range of degrees that your eyes can move. As previously said, I've already tested the values and know what works best for my eyes, but a range between 50 to 80 seems to work best for most models. Move around the camera and test the results. And if you're happy with it, right click the script, copy component, exit play mode and paste component values. This method can also be used when you're tweaking your spring bone values. Click on your model in the hierarchy and once again export it. You can also take a screenshot with the main camera you moved earlier as a thumbnail for your avatar. However, I forgot to do so here. Title your avatar differently here if you so wish and then click export. This time you want to find a permanent location to save your VRM file and name it appropriately so you know that this is the completed and ready to use version for whatever VRM application you are planning to use. And that's pretty much all done. That wasn't so hard now, was it? <laughs> At this point, feel free to open up the VR application of your choice and test out your avatar. I am using VC Face here to demonstrate that the conversion was successful and the model works without any issues. All right, guys, that will be it for the tutorial. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a thumbs up. And I did actually, for this tutorial, use a different sort of format to explain things. So if you did enjoy that, 
please let me know. Give a thumbs up and also let me know in the comments down below. And if you have any more questions about the tutorial or things don't work for you, uh, comment down below. I'll, I'll see if I can answer them for you. But uh, if you follow this tutorial along correctly and you're using an avatar that, that would work with VR chat or chill out VR, then you should not run into any issues at all. But if you do, as I said before, leave a comment down below. Without further ado, I think that's enough for, for you guys. You probably, uh, your brain's probably exploding going over uh, all the things I ran through in such a small space of time. But don't worry, you, you don't have to do everything that quickly. Um, feel free to pause the video and, and, and go through it at your own time and leisure. That'll be all for this video, so I hope you guys enjoyed it once again. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe for more uh, content. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.